Hey folks, no shooting, no casting, no reloading in this video. Gun maintenance, a couple honeydews. I hope that you find any of this informative. My dog, he's uh, all excited about it. Thanks. I have the bolt for my Remington 722 torn apart. This, remember this bolt is 65 years old and I'm looking down in here and it's just really crudded up uh, if you, any of you saw my videos about uh, the ejector problems I was having and you'll understand that this thing is in really bad shape uh, let's see if that'll focus that firing pin is really crudded up. So while I've got this part, I'm going to clean it all up. Now, the bolt on a 722 is not like a Remington 700. You can push this lip back, this knob, and stick a coin in there and unscrew it. This one here doesn't have that little slit like the Remington 700 has. So this is going to have to use a different approach to it, and I'll show you how when I get to it. But I'm going to work on this with some steel wool, and while I'm doing that, I'll get back to Uncle Jim's chat night. Yeah, this this uh, entire bolt, and I've, I've got this soaking and carburetor cleaner. I will clean this out in a while, and I will, uh, you know, even some of the darkness on here is finally starting to come off. This was just completely black, and it was just carbon, and I don't think this has ever been cleaned. I, in fact, I'm pretty sure that it's never been cleaned. But the uh, ejector plunger right here, it was sticky. Now it's starting to move pretty good. In fact, uh, I just ran some oil down in there. A while ago before I tore this apart and I put some empty cases in the chamber an empty ch case in the chamber cycled the boat and when I pulled it out it threw it across the basement so yeah the ejector plunger is start, uh, starting to free up pretty good keep soaking this and then I may uh, drive this pin out and pull the plunger out uh, there's a spring and a plunger in here and I'll pull these out and clean them up too but I'm going to have to get some steel wool and just really give this some TLC. Remember, this was my grandmother's rifle. Uh, it was made in 1953, I believe. And, uh, yeah, it just, need, it just needs a lot of TLC. And hopefully, I will get this back out to the range sometime soon. And we'll see how it works. Right, this is a uh, gun maintenance weekend for me. Um, I just am so far behind on maintaining my firearms and it's not a good thing. I uh, had one heck of a time getting all of the, uh, now look at my gloves ripped, yeah, these gloves. Um, I, you don't want to do this without gloves. So, um, <sighs> some of you in the side, that were in the side chat know that I was having heck of a time getting the carbon out of the uh, out of my uh, barrel of this 222 but I finally got it uh, good old CLP uh, keep using it and you'll get it so let me get back to this okay so I've cleaned this up there we go with the okay's again right I've cleaned this bolt up and I put it back together I was having any extractor problems and now, there she goes. That was just an empty case. So it was just the ejector part was um, gummed up. And the whole bolt was pretty much gummed up, as you saw in the firing pin. Now my 222 is back in service. Okay. There I am with the okay again. Sorry about that. A little dip of hops. We're cleaning the compass. Cleaned the 222 already. A little drop of that. Now, 
there are a lot of different cleaning solvents to use, but hops have been around for ever. Yeah, it's not too bad. We're getting there. Cleaning my Thompson Center Compass 243. A little bit of hops number nine. People can use the latest and greatest of the uh, cleaning solvents, but hops has always worked for me. So why change now? Um, I've run several patches through here. Of course, I did a lot of shooting with this and yeah, I've still got just a little bit of black on here. But this should just about clean it up enough. Um, I've already cleaned the bolt. This is my GI cleaning rod. Or my GI cleaning case. Anybody that's really old that's ever served in the military uh, back in the 60s, 70s, 80s would recognize that um i got that when i was in basic training i believe and i just never uh turned it back in i think it was probably used when i got it and that was in 76 so it kind of dates myself okay that's got still this little bit of darkness on it but i'm going to call that good it's just going to get shot more, but at least I don't have any car, um, copper fouling on there. It's just basically powder residue, carbon. And I'll call that one good for this. And I have more to clean. That's what happens when you shoot a lot. And get Make sure you get down here in the, in the chamber, the back. You don't want to have any of this solvent on here because it will start to eat the finish I believe I don't know that for sure but I just never leave anything wet in here I've cleaned the chamber really good um, that was one of the things that I really wanted to make sure I got was the chamber so I didn't want to bore you with that but yep yeah, this is just a gun cleaning weekend uh, gun maintenance weekend because I I already tore down and repaired the bolt on my Remington 722, and that thing, it's good to go now. I can shoot a lot more ammo through it, and it had copper fouling in it, and I had to use, uh, actually, I had to use some CLP to get that out. Even the hops wasn't going to get that out, but I got it, and she's shiny. Beautiful bore. I've uh, tried to look down into the chamber and the throat and the lead, and everything looks pretty good. And for a 65 plus year old rifle, I'd say that's good. This uh, Thompson Center, um, it's, um, well, I guess it's two years old now. And it's starting to get really smooth. Um, a lot of people. They, they're big complaints when they get a uh, Thompson Center. They say the bolt's really gritty. Uh, I probably fired uh, over a thousand rounds through this. And I've looked down the chamber and everything. It's looking really good. But this is getting to be as smooth as what my Mauser is. Another project for this weekend, other than cleaning guns, is straightening out my trailer that got wrecked. Uh, when I went on vacation, I'm using come, four ton come along, chain, everything to try and straighten this top rail out, this front rail. Last weekend I straightened this, two weekends ago, I straightened this long rail, brought it forward because it was pushed all the way back. So now I'm pulling this forward. This was ground down here when it went over on its side and there's not a whole lot I can do with that. I'll just have to patch this up somehow, probably with a welder and some paint things. I've got some caps. So I got the new brackets, I got the new buckle, and now I've got this almost straight. And this is just one of the little projects I do. And 
I'm putting so much tension on this now that the whole one side of my trailer is not even uh, not even on the ground. The tire's completely off the ground over there. But uh, it takes a lot to get this metal to straighten out. I don't have any big torches to heat the welds to get it to bend a little easier. So I'm just having to pull it and let the memory of the metal take again to where it should be. And next I'll probably clean some gum. Now I'm gonna tear down my 6.5 Grendel and clean it. And I've got to tell you, this bolt is remarkably clean for all of the rounds that I've put through this thing. Um, I've probably put 350 rounds through this and it's got just a little bit of carbon on there. Look down through my uh, charging handle is clean. My chamber is remarkably clean. Perhaps it's the powder that I'm using. You guys, I get a lot of criticism for the powder that I use. Um, basically, H4V895, 335, and I'm in the process right now of loading some. Oh, well, these are my 222s, but I'm going to load some 100. And 7 grain with some BLC2 and try to do some 123 grains of BLC2. And I've also, my wife bought me a new bipod for my birthday. So let's take this one off. This bipod is aluminum. It's a knockoff, it's a CB, CB life. Uh, it's a knockoff of basically a Harris bipod. But she got me, and this rifle is heavy anyway with this heavy, um, heavy profile stainless 20 inch barrel. But what she got me for my birthday, which is still coming up, but hey, you know, birthday present birthday present. This is, I have a Picatinny rail. I don't. I go straight into my M-lock. This is a carbon fiber bipod. I don't know if you can see the carbon fiber profiling or not. But this weighs eh, probably four or five ounces less than the aluminum one. And any weight that you can save is weight gain. But with this heavy uh, scope on here, and this thing right here is a beast. Yeah, sure, it's a CB Life, but it is still heavy and with the sunshade on there. It doesn't do it any favors for lightness, so I'm going to be putting this carbon fiber bipod on, and I'll probably put the aluminum bipod on my 243 on my Thompson Center compass, since the compass is fairly light anyway, and I like to use a bipod, and I can use this on uh, this carbon fiber one on the Grendel, and I can use the uh, Aluminum one on the on the compass. There. Now I have the carbon fiber mounted on here on the Grendel. I won't notice a whole lot of weight, but any weight saved is that much more. But I think it looks pretty good for. I don't remember. It was fifteen or eighteen dollars for this. You look at a Harris bipod like this in carbon fiber yeah hang on to your hat because that's a pretty stout price that they want and they do the same thing so once again 
that's why I'm on a budget. Okay, I've got the bolt broken down. As you can see, I've got a little bit of dirt on here uh, on the firing pin. It's not a big problem. I put a little bit of oil on the bolt or on the firing pin. That way, they come clean a lot easier uh, when you don't drop your rag. Easy cleanup, easy peasy. Now that's not even with any cleaner on it. But pretty doggone clean now. The powders that I use, they don't gum up everything. If you know where to put oil on your AR type platform modern sporting rifles. Now that cam is clean. If you know where to put the oil, they're easy to clean up. A little cotter pin, my firing pin re retaining clip. Clean. This bolt won't take much to clean it. I will use my toothbrush and my uh, cleaner to clean that. But this bolt is almost clean. A little bit of carbon right here where you're always going to get that on a direct impingement gas gun. But that carbon's coming off pretty good. People complain about how hard it is to clean an AR type firearm. I've been doing this for 40 plus years. And I learned where to put a little bit of a little bit of grease to collect the carbon, or not to put any grease to keep it from um, co collecting it. And they're a lot easier to clean up after that. Anybody that's been in the military for any amount of time will tell you that these are tough for firearms to clean until you know how to prevent your crud from getting there. Like I said, I've got probably 350 rounds through this. Haven't cleaned it. This is the first cleaning I've done since I got it. So I'm pretty pleased with how everything's working. Yeah, like I said, this I haven't even used any cleaner and it's already coming clean. So I'm gonna do a quick wipe down with some hops. Uh, again, that's uh, even in the military, that's what I used. Uh, we had the GI cleaning stuff, and that was fine. But also, get you a set of picks if you can have an AR. Um, they'll get into all these little nooks and crannies a lot better. Like right here around the bolt. I say, since this is a Grendel Type 2, it's got a really deep face here on the bolt. Gives good support on your on your uh, cartridge. The problem with the Grendels and the uh, originally six five Grendel was these would break off right here. Your lugs would break, and they just weren't deep enough right here. So the Type Two is a lot deeper. So let me give this a quick wipe down. I'll get right back to you. Okay, it literally just took me just a couple of minutes to uh, clean this off. I went and washed my hands so you can see that it is clean. No more dirt on my hands. Um, one thing I wanted to show you, people knock Bear Creek Arsenal. This is a Bear Creek Arsenal bolt. Do you notice any wear on this? This is wearing really well. I use my own proprietary grease on here and what it is it says grease I took some trucking fifth wheel grease it's called red uh, red and tacky I 
and I mixed some graphite that you get from your um, your door lock graphite and I just put a very small dab right here where the hammer rides on it and here in the rails just very light and this keeps my wear down and the graphite helps that bolt slide really well the red and tacky keeps the keeps the um, graphite in suspension so that's all I use for that and on the bolt I use just a little bit right here around the rings just to keep a good seal but I wanted to show you too on the rings you see that I've got my gaps really close again with the pick you want to spread these out 120 degrees away from each other so this front front one will get turned okay hopefully you don't want your you don't want your seals your gaps to line up your, you'll get gas blow by most of you already know this, but for those that don't, that should be enough separation there where you're not going to get any gas blow by. I have just a little bit on my fingers uh, of that grease from, that I used, and I put just a little bit of a dab here on my rings. People can say what they want. But it's something that I started doing back in the Army, and it's worked really good. And I put just a little bit here on my, on my lugs. It'll help it go into battery a little better, and it won't gum up. Again, 40 plus years of playing with an AR platform, and uh, that's what I've done, and it works really good. Now I have too much in there, so I'll take a rag and just wipe that out a little bit. All you want is just, just a very light, very, very light coating. And basically all it's doing is protecting the metal from any corrosion that may set in. Also, I don't know if you can see that or not is MPI this has been magnetically particle magnetic particle magnetic particle inspected so at a very low price point Bear Creek is doing things that the very expensive gun manufacturers do and as you can see I'm not getting anywhere at all on here this ring right here is another place just to put just the lightest lightest amount of, of uh, grease on there and as you can see I'm bringing a lot of it up back off but the graphite is what's going to make it run smoother so my own my own formula of grease no put the bolt back together and I'll clean the barrel okay let's see how dirty this thing is it's a little little bit of hops in here I have to get the rag completely soaked but I can tell you right now that this thing is not very dirty That's my first patch through there. You guys want to keep knocking me for $48.95. H4895. Does that look very dirty for 350 rounds? I um, I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to run this patch back through there a couple more times. I mean, I'm looking down in the chamber. The chamber looks good. And since this is a 20-inch barrel... And uh, these, my GI cleaning rod is 
for 20 inch barrel. That's just about the full length of it. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's not bad at all. I'll take that 48.95 anytime or 48.98 anytime. 48.95. Sorry, I'm tired. I got to get up in a couple hours and go back to work. But I thought I would throw this in. Let's just see. Trim this down just a little bit. These are just cheap. I don't know. They're like cut up t-shirts or something like that. That's what this is. Okay, this is my chamber that I'm running through right now. Um, that's not bad for as many rounds as I've thrown through this. I'll uh, just put a little drop of hops on here again and clean that chamber out a little bit more. Chamber is very important when you're cleaning. If you don't clean that chamber, then you could have rounds getting stuck. And that is nice and shiny in there. I mean, the places that you normally, on an AR configured firearm, around your locking lugs here at the at the extension <laughs> i'm looking down in there and it's shiny as can be so i'm pretty pleased with how this powder is burning through and i'm not getting hardly any powder i'm not getting any copper i'll see after this is soaked for a little while if i'm getting any copper You always tell if you get copper, you'll get a little green here where the powder is and the, the residue, but that's just light gray. That's just unburned powder. Um, that helps your accuracy a lot. So, okay, well, let me uh, run a couple more patches through here and I won't bore you with that. And just thought I'd give you a couple little what I do's. This is my third patch that I've run down there. And again, you're not seeing a whole lot of really dirty stuff. The chamber is completely clean. And I will work on the inside of the chamber. There's a little bit that's dribbled off. really this thing is not dirty at all I mean if I could have had my m16 when I was in the military come out this clean every time I fired it I would have been a happy guy because there was times that it would take me on a repeated firing session it would take me a couple hours to clean and get it clean enough for a white glove inspection and every inspection for me was a white glove inspection because last thing I wanted was my firearm to fail me now the gas tube is clean um, wow I mean this is incredible I, I just cannot believe this and like I said this is the first time I've cleaned this since I got it and I got it when back in April March April and I said I fired probably 350 rounds through this. Yeah, those lugs are clean. Man, this this would pass any uh, any inspection from the military. So <clears throat> I 
think I found a winner. It's a lot easier to clean that one than it is anything else. Um, in fact, my 243, I fired just about as many rounds through the 243 as what I have through this. And I would say that this was easier and cleaner than my 243. And that's a bolt gun versus a direct impingement gun. So, yeah, that's a win. Okay, I'm going to put this back together and call it a day. But that's me just putzing around the, the yard. Uh, been a gun maintenance weekend. Been other honeydew projects for the weekend. Oh, and the lower. Let's take a look at the lower. Let's see, right across there. Just a little bit of carbon there. Nothing down on the lower. In fact, this thing is just as clean as can be. A little bit across the buffer tube. A little bit of dust down in the magazine, but that's to be expected. If you've seen my videos, you'll know that I'm out in the desert shooting this. So, yeah, I mean, this is my Wyndham Weaponry um lower i have a ar-15 upper with it and yeah it's a it's a win 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 i love the windham my ar-15 is really a sweetheart and um, almost every part on here is the factory windham parts the stock the uh lower my AR-15 upper all came from Wyndham Weaponry. The only thing that's not Wyndham is my upper for my 6.5 Grendel. And as I keep saying, that's Bear Creek Arsenal. And I could not be happier with Bear Creek. Um, I don't get any endorsement from them. Um, nope. They don't pay me to say that. I only call them like I see them. One thing that uh, may be concerned for some people is my, okay, let's get that off, my buffer tube is commercial. It's not a mil spec. It's a little bit larger than mil spec, and in some ways I find that's good. Some way I find that's bad. Most of your... Uh, replacement stocks are for mil spec and not for commercial so call it what you will it came with the rifle i've left it alone i get really good solid lockup on my uh, on my collapsible stock and that's another thing always clean down in here because you get dust and dirt down in here especially if you're like me and you're out in the desert all the time so doesn't hurt just to take a cloth and wipe that out. Keep you from having troubles later. But, <clears throat> good, bad, or otherwise, um, this commercial stock, solid. Uh, I've seen too many of the mil specs that just have a lot of rattle back there. And this one here, no, it fits nice and snug. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to put this thing back together, put it back in the safe. Like I said, I've got to get up really early in the morning, go back to work. My one day off is over. So thanks for hanging with me during my Jerry Putzes Around the Yard video. And I hope you all have happy shooting and safe shooting. Bye for now.